Us so-called influencers are nothing without our followers. I've got eight fragrances here that I purchased because of you guys. And whoever gets the most likes in the comments down below suggesting a new fragrance for the channel for me to check out, I will go and buy that fragrance. Next up from Atrium Fragrance. Mr. Maritime, my wife just got this for me for our anniversary, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Anybody looking for a different summertime fragrance should look no further than this. It's a fruity, tropical marine fragrance with some aromatics. It has some rhubarb, but also this awesome mango on top that is just stellar, mixed with some pretty strong sea notes. It really is something special and very different. Mr. Maritime. So in today's video, I'm covering eight fragrances that you guys, as followers, either on YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram, you recommended one of these fragrances to us. Okay, a few of these I didn't actually buy, but we'll get to that in a second. But most of these I did because you guys said to me that these are fantastic, these are fire. Some of you guys were right, some of you were horribly wrong. So today I thought I'd cover these fragrances and kind of talk about them and see if I agreed with my followers' recommendations or not. So kind of see this video as, you know, these fragrances are getting hype and is the hype worth it for each of these? Let's begin. First up, we have Latafa's Hamra, which is supposedly a clone of Killian's Angel Share, if you haven't guessed already. Now, the hype for this fragrance came everywhere, but I think it was mainly Instagram, where people said, you know, this is a clone of uh, Angel Share, you don't need to buy Angel Share anymore. And I'm here to say that is just not true. Angel Share definitely still completely owns this. This is not even much of a clone, actually. I would say this is more of like an 80% similar fragrance, it's sort of like a similar idea but nowhere near the execution of the original. I would say that this fragrance gets the gourmand aspects right, but doesn't get the booziness aspects right of Angel's Share. Angel's Share is whiskey with praline, sweet, vanillic. It's like a boozy gourmand fragrance that is perfect for the evening time. That fragrance smells complex, multifaceted, it's balanced. Whilst this fragrance sort of goes a little bit too thick, it kind of goes into its own direction of being a very simple and flat fragrance. So it's more like an ambery evening scent that's nice for the price, but I don't think it's a very good clone exactly of Angel's Share. It's not a bad fragrance overall. I think I give like a seven or eight out of 10 in the clone video I did for this fragrance. I'm particularly not that, you know, over enamored with this fragrance, I wouldn't mind giving this bottle away, but I think it's worth checking out if you can get it at a very cheap price, but don't spend too much on this. I don't think it's the best Angel Share clone yet. I think other people have other alternatives that are better. If you guys know better alternatives or better clones to Angel Share, share them in the comments down below. Then we have Etat Libre d'Orange, Remarkable People. I didn't buy this fragrance. This is actually gifted to me by a friend in, in our Discord group. So big up to you, Luke, you know who you are. And he sent this to me saying, you know, this is a really unique, great summer signature. And I agree. This is the only Etat Libre d'Orange fragrance that I own. I do technically own a sample of Secretion Magnifique, but I don't want to talk about that fragrance right now. I'm still trying to recover. Uh, Remarkable People, though, is a very pleasant fragrance. This is a very unique summertime scent. So those, those of you in Australia coming up to your summer season, you go for it, man. Like, I think this is a fantastic concept. It is a sandalwood summer scent, which is very unique in itself already. Then it has, you know, a lot of grapefruit up top and then it mixes it with a champagne note and, and they've recreated this, yeah, realistic, photorealistic champagne note that it's very clever, very unique, fizzy, bright, expensive smelling. Doesn't have the greatest performance, four to six hours, but for a summer fragrance, this is fantastic. This really is a unique summer scent. I think if you're a man who wants a masculine but elegant summertime signature that makes you stand out, makes you smell unique, I 100% recommend this fragrance. I think you should check it out. So thank you, Luke, for sending this to me. Thank you for recommending it. You are the best. Then we have Paco Rabanne's Invictus Legend, a fragrance a lot of people kept recommending to me on TikTok. We have the younger audience on TikTok, and they always said, you know, what about uh, Invictus Legend? What do you think of Invictus Legend? I kept talking about Invictus, but not this flanker. I tried this fragrance once in store before. I didn't like the opening, and in fairness, the opening is bad. I don't like the opening of this fragrance. However, because people on TikTok kept telling me to go check it out, I eventually just ended up blind buying a full bottle and I actually really like this fragrance. I think this is the spiritual successor of Invictus Aqua 2016. If you like 2016 Aqua, this is the fragrance for you. And even this is discontinued now. So actually that's a bit sad, but I think you still get this. It is basically Invictus Aqua 2016, a salty, aquatic, woody, masculine fragrance now added with a bit of amber sweetness on top. This is a summertime signature as well. That is loud, it's long lasting, very good performer that I think works perfectly as a summertime clubbing scent. This is one of the few fragrances that exist out there that is just perfect for the summertime, for clubbing or partying, for loud environments. It is green, clean, mean, and it's an absolute machine of a performer 
with those salty, ambery notes in there. And I just think it smells a bit more modern and relevant than the original Invictus. I think that fragrance is starting to smell outdated, but this, you know, modernizes the DNA a bit more, it smells a little bit more mature. Sort of like if the teenager who wore the original would then go and upgrade to this in their 20s. So yeah, I think the recommendation was on point. So thank you to all you TikTokers who kept insisting I try it out again. By the way, guys, if you are enjoying our content, make sure you are subscribed. I don't understand, guys. Apparently only 29% of you who view our videos are actually subscribed to us, which is very sad. Please don't make me sad, guys. It's not very nice of you. Please, I've worked so hard, our editor worked so hard to bring these videos to you. So if you enjoy our videos at all, make sure you subscribe. Let's try to get that number to 40% so we can be one of the most viewed to subscribe ratioed fragrance channels on the internet, if that makes sense. Now we have Tom Ford's Plum Japonais, another discontinued scent, but you guys know I love the notes of plum and fragrances. He kept insisting that I try a Plum Japonais, and I think I really had to eventually, even though it's discontinued, I eventually got a sample somehow, and I'm actually wearing this on my hand now. And as soon as I smelled it, I actually thought this smells a little bit like lost cherry. So I think that was the first cherry fragrance that Tom Ford came out with, but that fragrance wasn't very nice. Uh, <laughs> they both have this, share this medicinal aspect to them. They both smell a bit medicinal-like, but lost cherry kind of dries down to a, a powdery, forgettable mess, whilst Plum Japonais is actually very interesting. I don't think it's for everyone. I think it's definitely a dark, intense fragrance with a lot of character. It's unique. It smells like candied plum that is medicinal mixed with a woody oud. So it's candied Middle Eastern oud with a plum note in here. So it's very interesting. You don't really get a plum and oud fragrance very often in the industry. So I can see why a lot of people miss this fragrance. Great performer, great longevity and great character. This definitely represents the old Tom Ford back when they had risk takers in their industry and they you know, had people who actually wanted to make creative fragrances that actually stood out and stood the test of time. Sadly discontinued. So basically I think if you're looking for a cold weather nighttime fragrance that has the notes of plum, this is it. I am obviously focusing on plum because some of you might be suspecting that actually our next release in Atrium very well could be a plum based fragrance. So yeah, thank you guys for recommending this fragrance. Fantastic, phenomenal. Hall of Fame fragrance. Al Haramain's Detour Noir. Everyone kept recommending this. I think it was on YouTube that people recommended this to me. And I think this was getting a lot of hype because everyone was saying it's such an accurate clone of Leighton, such an accurate clone. The last time I heard that, I tried Alexandria Fragrance's Royal Equestrian, which I thought was 80% similar. And I was like, nah, you can't really recreate Leighton. It's such an expensive smelling scent. So I didn't really have high hopes for this fragrance. And then it shocked me. I gave this a 10 out of 10 in the end, um, actually. People were right, this is a very accurate clone of Leighton. It is, I would say, 95% similar. Horrible opening, horror, horror show of an opening, but once you get past those first few minutes, beautiful scent. I think it smells very similar, and it lasts a very similar amount of time as well, about 10 hours with a medium amount of projection. This is one of those fragrances that doesn't exactly get the, the quality of Leighton. It doesn't make Leighton completely redundant. I think, you know, if you're a Leighton owner, you're not gonna just smell this and think, oh, I wasted my money. No, not at all. But I think this is better value for money than Leighton, and I think if you own this and you enjoy it enough, you don't have to get Leighton. It's not a, you know, a, 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 an inferior product at all. It really does match up to Leighton for its price tag. For its price, this is incredible. That's why I give it a 10 out of 10. It has the scent profile, the blend, the performance, the wearability, and the price. It meets all criteria, so thank you guys for hyping, for hyping this fragrance up. I think this is one of the best clones ever created in recent times. Missoni Wave. A lot of people kept recommending this because again, this was getting hype I think on TikTok, Instagram mainly, that this basically you makes Versace Purom and Alurum Sports redundant. Not true. Uh, I think this is a cool fragrance. Back in the day, you could get this for like 15, 20 pounds. So I can understand why people kind of went, get, got hyped about it. And like, I get the scent profiles there. It's similar scent profile, but the, the, it's just the quality and the texture. It's, you understand, some fragrances have a certain texture to them that makes it more smooth. This smells a bit screechy, a bit overly soapy and synthetic. That is the issue that I have with Missoni Wave. It gets a 90% similarity in the scent profile of let's say Versace pour on, but it doesn't have that smoothness, that ease of wearability, that ease of palatability that those fragrances have. This fragrance does smell like a cheap fragrance, and that's why I think it's just better to save up a little bit more. It's not a huge amount more to just get Versace pour on or Allure Homme Sports. It's a nice bottle presentation. I like the magnetic lid as well, but I just don't think it's worth it. I, I think when you have clone fragrances of already relatively affordable scents, it really has to be much better than the original to make you make you actually care about it. I don't really care about this, and I, again, I wouldn't mind just giving this bottle away. So I don't agree with that recommendation. Do you guys agree or disagree? Am I being too unfair on Missoni Wave? 
Kenzo Om Odapar Fan. Now, I think the recommendations for this came around the time when Kenzo unfortunately passed away recently, and a lot of people started checking out his fragrances, the, the house's stuff, and I think there was a Kenzo's Om the Eau de Toilette Intense that people liked, but it didn't get the best reviews. It's kind of like a watermelon aquatic scent, I think, that was long lasting. Then people said, check out Om Eau de Parfum. It's a great, smooth, versatile signature. And I thought that was pretty, sounds pretty cool and aquatic that you can wear all year round. We haven't had that since like Aqua di Gio Profuma, maybe. So I thought, let's check this out. And this is a cool fragrance, very unique. It is a fig based suede aquatic. It is a mature, smooth aquatic for the sophisticated, mature man. I would say this is basically the Armani code of aquatics. If you like Armani codes and you like aquatics, go for this. Don't go for that rubbish Armani code colonial. I don't know what that was about. I know there's gonna be some haters coming for me, but I don't like the fragrance. I don't think it was very good. So this is, yeah, fantastic. This is the aquatic Armani code with fantastic performance. This is very office friendly because it's got a fairly soft projection, but it lasts around 10 hours, eight to 10 hours. It's very smooth, simple, linear in fairness, but it's a cool idea and I like the creativity behind this. So thank you for the recommendation. Afnan Supremacy, not only intense. So many guys hyped this. I think it was a TikTok again, mainly, where people said that, yeah, this is the best Aventus clone ever. Then I got it and I actually, I thought the Aventus clone thing was there in the opening very similar in Aventus in the way it was a very juicy pineapple fragrance and then after five minutes it dries down and you realize this is a clone of something else. This is a Hashivat clone. So this is a fragrance basically if you like Nishani's Hashivat, that very oak mossy, masculine mature version of that kind of Aventus style of families, uh, this is the fragrance for you. So it's sort of like Aventus and Hashivat mixed together and like the first six hours of this fragrance is really nice and the last two hours in this eight hours longevity, I get a really synthetic muskiness in here that I don't like. So I don't think it's a bad clone at all, but in a world and sea of clones that replicate the Aventus style of families, I'd rather go for something like Al Harmes L'Aventure, honestly. Uh, I don't think this is a, a bottle that I need to keep in my collection. I think I was a little bit disappointed with this recommendation. And finally, a 10 out of 10 recommendation was Tales from Zanzibar, Memoirs of a Perfume Collector. Because of you guys on YouTube, I think, someone kept saying that I need to check out this fragrance. It's, they said it was guava and oud, and that piqued my interest. So I got a sample from a Facebook uh, selling and swapping group. That sample was phenomenal. I was like, wow, this smells so unique. It just keeps lasting on you forever. And then I got this partial bottle from a Facebook group as well. So check out Facebook groups, guys, if you want some remarkable deals, because this fragrance is super unique. Guava, citruses, Oud, very sharp, woody, and Middle Eastern, but with a very fruity and tropical touch. This is one of the best niche frames that you'll ever smell. And I think this house is starting to get a lot of praise and attention that it deserves, especially for myself. I recommended their other fragrance, Trouble in Paradise as well, Mango and Oud. They like their Middle Eastern stuff. They're, you know, I think they're a UAE bunch who live in London who started this house. Check them out if you haven't already, guys. They are a very good brand that's focus on Middle Eastern style meeting Western sensibilities is a good mix and a very reasonably priced. I give this fragrance 10 out of 10, one of the best summer fragrances I own, highly recommend it. I think we accidentally did nine fragrances in the end guys, but uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys giving recommendations. So let me see who's gonna be the top liked comments down below to see which fragrance I should buy next. Um, yeah, I really do appreciate you guys. Us content creators can only create content for so much, you know, until we have to really go to our audience. You guys make us, or break us and we have to really, you, you guys are the reason I exist. So I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel over the years and you know, I appreciate any of you guys who supported Atrium as well. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. What are your thoughts on the frames as mentioned today? Do you agree or disagree with my opinions? Let us know in the comments down below as well. If you haven't already, check out our previous video on me buying all the clones you guys recommended and seeing my review on them. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.